Welcome to Infection Control for Healthcare Food Service Staff Part 1. This training provides general information about infection prevention practices used to prevent foodborne illnesses. The CDC estimates that each year 48 million Americans get sick from consuming contaminated food or beverages, resulting in 128,000 hospitalizations and 3,000 deaths. Foodborne illness commonly results in discomfort caused by vomiting and diarrhea and possibly lost time from work. But for young children, the elderly, and those with impaired immune systems, a foodborne illness can be more serious. Foodborne illnesses are commonly linked to these five lapses in infection prevention practices. Food service employees who work while sick with diarrhea or vomiting. Improper hot holding temperatures for food. Inadequate cooking of foods. Contaminated food preparation, equipment, and food from unlicensed vendors. In this video, we'll talk about how best to perform your work duties to reduce the risk of foodborne illness. We'll mostly be focusing on using proper personal hygiene when handling food in your workplace. This includes proper hand washing, glove use, and work practices to prevent cross-contamination, such as not working when you are ill or eating and drinking in food preparation or serving areas. Hand hygiene is critical in preventing the spread of foodborne illnesses. A recent CDC published study determined 89% of foodborne outbreaks were caused by foods contaminated by unclean hands. The CDC and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, known as the FDA, recommend washing hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds prior to preparing and serving food. When washing your hands in a kitchen, Make sure you use the designated hand washing sink with paper towel dispensers to dry your hands and turn off the faucets or the automatic hand washing station. Sinks that are used for food preparation, dishwashing, or other purposes should never be used to wash your hands. These are designated separately to help prevent the spread of germs in the kitchen. According to the FDA, food service employees should wash their hands anytime you enter a food preparation area, anytime you put on clean, single-use gloves to work with food, including when you are changing gloves, anytime before you start preparing food, before you handle clean food preparation equipment or serving utensils, whenever you have been handling raw foods and need to switch to handling ready-to-eat, RTE foods, for example, fruit, after you handle soiled dishes, equipment or utensils, after touching any bare part of your body, for example, scratching your nose or arm. After you enter the restroom or use the toilet. After coughing, sneezing, blowing your nose, using tobacco, eating or drinking. And after caring for or handling service animals or aquatic animals, such as mollusks or shellfish in display tanks. It's important that food service workers know how to wash their hands correctly. Let's review this critical practice. Rinse hands under clean, warm running water. Apply enough soap to create a thick lather or the amount of soap recommended by the manufacturer. Rub hands together vigorously for at least 20 seconds while ensuring that dirt is removed from under your fingernails and from the surfaces of the hands and arms. Rinse hands under clean running water. Dry hands using single-use disposable towels, a continuous towel system that supplies a new towel at each use, or a heated air or hand drying device. Do not dry clean hands on a non-disposable towel. Turn off the faucet and open the door with a paper towel if possible to avoid recontaminating your hands. Never use your apron or any part of your uniform to dry your hands as this will recontaminate your hands. Other important infection control personal hygiene practices you should follow include Keep your fingernails short and clean and do not wear nail polish or false fingernails. Do not handle food with an infected boil, burn, cut, or sore. Food may be handled if you cover the injury with a clean bandage and wear a glove. Single-use gloves should be worn as follows. Always wash hands before putting on gloves. 
Do not touch ready-to-eat foods with your bare hands. Instead, wear gloves or use tongs or other suitable utensils. Wear gloves that fit the size of your hands. Do not blow into the glove to make it easier to put on. Do not rinse, wash, or reuse gloves. Wash your hands after removing gloves and before putting on a new pair. Change your gloves as soon as they become dirty or torn. Before beginning a different task. Before preparing food for a guest with a known food allergy. After handling raw meat, seafood, or poultry, and before handling ready-to-eat food. After an interruption that occurs, such as a phone call. Dirty hair, skin, and clothing may carry pathogens or germs that can cause foodborne illnesses. Bathing regularly and wearing clean clothes every day gives customers a good impression and also reduces the chance of spreading infections. It is important to wear fresh, clean clothing that is laundered daily. Clothing includes but is not limited to aprons, chef coats, and uniforms. Remove your apron and store it correctly when leaving food prep areas during your shift. Street clothes and other personal belongings should be stored away from food and food prep areas. Bathing every day using soap as well as shampoo is an expectation of practicing good infection control. In addition to washing and wearing clean clothes, food service workers must cover exposed hair when working in the food prep areas and in areas where utensils and equipment are cleaned, according to facility policies. Food handlers with facial hair may be required to wear a beard cover. Because jewelry has been found to harbor pathogens, rings, bracelets, and watches should be removed before you enter any food prep areas. Now, let's talk about infection control risks associated with eating, drinking, smoking, and chewing gum when preparing food. Saliva contains pathogens that can cause foodborne illness. By placing your hand to your mouth when you are smoking or eating, you put yourself at risk of contaminating yourself as well as food and surfaces in the area. This is why eating, drinking, smoking, and chewing gum are not allowed in the food preparation areas. Food service workers who are ill should stay home until no longer contagious. Germs spread by ill employees can contaminate food, utensils, and surfaces used to prepare food. Food service workers experiencing symptoms of a sore throat with fever, jaundice, yellowing of the skin or dark tea-colored urine, diarrhea, or vomiting are not permitted to come to work. Supervisors should advise employees to stay home if they report experiencing diarrhea or vomiting. Employees should not return to work until at least 24 hours after the vomiting or diarrhea have stopped. Workers caring for someone, such as a child or parent, who has been ill with diarrhea or vomiting, should take special care to properly and thoroughly wash their hands while at work and home. Preventing contamination of food when storing, prepping, and serving food is an important part of a food service worker's job. Cross-contamination of food with pathogens can occur when germs from one source are transferred to another surface or food. Prevent contamination of food by following these rules. Wrap or cover food and place in clean containers before storing in designated food storage areas. Ready-to-eat food should be stored separately from raw food, including when transporting food to off-site locations. If separate storage areas aren't possible for ready-to-eat and raw food, store food in the following top-to-bottom order. This order is based on the minimum internal cooking temperatures of each food. Ready-to-eat food, seafood, whole cuts or beef and pork, ground meat and ground fish, whole and ground poultry. Store non-food items at least six inches above the floor and away from walls. When preparing or prepping food, Handling both raw and ready-to-eat food items without washing your hands in between may result in cross-contamination. By cross-contamination, we mean the transfer of pathogens or germs from one food source to another, which may cause a foodborne illness. Follow these infection control rules to prevent cross-contamination when preparing food. Clean and sanitize the work area, prep sink, 
cutting boards, equipment, and utensils before use. Prep raw meat, seafood, and poultry at different times than ready-to-eat food if using the same workstation. Clean and sanitize work surfaces, utensils, and equipment between each type of food product. Ready-to-eat foods should never touch non-sanitized surfaces used to prepare raw meat, seafood, or poultry. Rinse produce in a strainer with running water slightly warmer than the food. Pull apart leafy greens such as lettuce or spinach to ensure that any soil and as many pathogens as possible are removed during washing. And we've covered basic infection prevention practices for food service workers, including proper personal hygiene and prevention of cross-contamination during the storage, preparation, and serving of food in the first part of today's training. Please continue to the next video, Infection Control Training for the Food Service Worker Part 2, where we will cover infection prevention in customer self-service areas, temperature requirements in food service, and additional information on cleaning and sanitizing procedures.